raise your hands. If you can hear me, raise your hands. I want to see the hands up in the back. There we go. Welcome to Melrose Pride 2023. I am the MC for the evening. My name is Samantha M. E. M. That's the last name. I almost wore a shirt today that just said E. M. So it would get it across, but didn't happen. All right. So, um, very first thing that I want to do is give a huge shout out and thank you to the Melrose Highlands Congregational Church for being able to host us here at the last minute. And I guess we're going to get started. We've got a few speakers coming up. Um, and afterwards, we have a band. A band that I happen to know and love because I'm the drummer for said band. Girl Skull will be playing today. Um, and just a heads up for those with uh, sound sensitivities or maybe young ones with sound sensitivities. Yeah. We're loud. So, uh, first person coming up to speak is uh, Randall Carter, the Milrose Human Rights Commission Commissioner. Thank you very much, Samantha, and thank you all for being here. Um, you know, we appreciate everyone's flexibility, um, and especially, uh, I just want to start with a oops, hot mic here. Okay. Um, I just wanted to start with a few thank yous. Um, I wanted to, and if we could just hold our applause to the end so we can do a one, one big great round of applause for everyone. Um, just to, know, um, to acknowledge our sponsors. We have Evolve Mechanical, Fitness Together, Noble's Law, Melrose Wakefield Hospital, Sweet Spot Bakery, uh, who donated a lot of cake that will be getting put out very soon, so be on the lookout for that. Um, we have Wegmans, Lisa's Pizzeria for the 40 cheese pizzas that you have all devoured. Uh, and the YMCA for loaning their mural space. Um, I wanted to acknowledge quickly our community tables. Uh, we have Nagley, uh, the Massachusetts LGBT Chamber of Commerce, uh, the Melrose High and Middle School GSAs, Epic Melrose, um, the Tufts Pride Alliance, and the Council on Aging. And uh, very quickly, I just wanted to make some other thank yous. Um, really big shout out for our volunteers who were here uh, a few hours before this got kicked off to set up tables and do all that great stuff. Um, Stacy Mancello at the Council of Aging, Lily Martin at the Mayor's Office, Follow Your Art, and the Melrose Public Library. So if we could just give everybody a huge round of applause for making this happen, especially when the rain conspired to dampen pride, but we wouldn't let that happen. Um, we made it inside and no one's gonna get struck by lightning today. Um, so just very briefly, before I bring up the mayor, I wanted to, um, I just wanted to talk really briefly about intersectionality, uh, which is the idea that struggles of seemingly disparate groups such as LGBT community, people of color, women, and others are fundamentally interconnected, that the same social, political, and economic systems that discriminate against one group also disadvantage others. In honor of the, the liberatory roads of pride, it started as a, you know, a, a righteous uprising for liberation. I have a simple request, especially to the LGBT allies. I ask that we spend some time thinking about the ways that our um, intersecting identities impact our experiences. As a biracial black man, I have suffered in this life because of the color of my skin. But at the same time, I do not take for granted um, I don't take for granted uh, the privilege that I enjoy as a straight, cisgender man. Are there ways in which your, you benefit from your identity? That's just something to think about and wrestle with, I encourage you. Um, so just to bring it on home, uh, it's understandable if you're not fully convinced of our interwoven struggles, but I offer a warning. In the repugnant Supreme Court decision that overturned Roe v. Wade, Justice Thomas declared open season on a legal doctrine that undergirds many of the 20th century's most important civil rights cases. This doctrine, yeah, boo, uh, I agree. This doctrine called substantive due process 
uh, helped to codify things like access to contraception, same-sex marriage, interracial marriage, and the privacy of same-sex couples. Justice Thomas basically invited conservative legal activists to pull on this thread, case by case, to erode all of our hard-won uh, rights. You couldn't ask for a clearer or a more dire microcosm of our inter uh, interconnectedness. So, as Dr. King said, the arc of the moral universe may bend toward justice, but it won't budge without the effortful struggle of good people to bend it that way. I encourage you to embrace the interconnectedness of our struggles, because guess what? Far-right conservative politicians and judges certainly do. Thank you very much. Random Carter, everyone. Commissioner of the Melrose Human Rights Commission. And just to run through things quickly as we can, coming up now, we have the mayor who made sure to take his shoes off before coming up to the stage. Go for it, go for it. No, 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 sorry. No, 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 get back there. Get back there. Don't worry about the pizza, just pick up the sticks and hit something. Yay! And thus concludes the musical portion of the evening. Mayor Paul Brodor. Hello, Melrose, and say it with me, happy pride! Happy pride! So we have the, um, we've taken pride inside, we did it the right time, unlike if you happen to be involved with Norris High School graduation, you know, we kind of learned a bit, we figured it out, and what a terrific day. Randall spoke very seriously and very correctly, and what he said about Justice Thomas, that probably wasn't an ad lib, that was probably something right from a Clarence Thomas opinion, because he doesn't speak too much, but when he writes, whew, watch out. But I am here, to talk about the good news in this community. Since, I want to say, the 90s, Mel's Human Rights Commission in this community has made itself, made its mission and really its aspiration to be one community open to all. And that does go a little bit to intersectionality, but I want you all to do something for me, because this is a community gathering of the queer community and its allies, that is a little bit abstract, right? So before you leave, find someone you don't know that you haven't seen about the book. Maybe you've seen it something, you don't kind of know their story. It doesn't have to be 20 minutes, doesn't have to be an hour. But introduce yourself, tell them a little bit about yourself and your story. Make each other feel welcome, because it's really, all about the connection. So have a great night. Thanks to all the sponsors and community activists that make this work, but on a day-to-day -day basis, make our community feel supported. And have a great night and enjoy the rest of the month. Thank you so much to Mayor Paul Berger. I hope you can find his shoes. There we go. Okay, next we have coming up, uh, Representative Kate Lippert Garabedian. Happy Pride, everyone. It's great to be with you. Um, I wanted to just raise up the voice of someone from the LGBTQ community. So I'm going to read a poem tonight that was written by the poet Angelina Weld Grimke. Angelina was born in Boston in 1880. Her father, Archibald, was born enslaved in South Carolina. His mother was a mixed-race woman of color, enslaved by his father, who was a white slave owner. Archibald ultimately became the second African-American to graduate from Harvard Law School, an attorney, the vice president of the NAACP, and the American consul to the Dominican Republic. Angelina's mother, Sarah, was a white woman from the Midwest. She was named after her great aunt, the famous abolitionist and women's rights advocate, Angelina Grimke Weld. Thinking about all this intersectionality, right? Angelina spent all but four years of her childhood growing up in Boston, and she attended what is now Wellesley College. 
As an author, she wrote poetry, drama, and short stories, and often focused on topics such as lynching and the injustices of living as a black person in America. Her diary entries demonstrate that she was queer, though she was unable to leave open, live openly during her lifetime and died in 1958. So I'm gonna read a poem that she wrote. It's called At the Spring Dawn. I picked it in part because of her story, but also because here we are at the end of the spring, which is when Pride Month begins, and we're heading into the summer. And there are a lot of references to color, so I hope all of you can listen out for them. It makes me think of the Pride flag. At the Spring Dawn. I watched the dawn come, watched the spring dawn come, and the red sun shouldered his way up through the gray, through the blue, through the lilac mists, the quiet of it, the goodness of it. And one bird awoke, saying word, a blur of moving black against the sun, sang again afar off. And I stretched my arms to the redness of the sun, stretched to my fingertips, and I laughed. Ah, it is good to be alive, good to love, at the dawn, at the spring dawn. Happy Pride. State Representative Kate Lipper-Garabedian, thank you. Coming up, coming up next we have, I'm assuming he's gonna, oh yeah, here we go. Senator, State Senator Jason Lewis, thank you. Thank you, Samantha. Happy Pride, everyone. I look around this room and I see the strength, the diversity, the joy of the LGBTQ plus community and friends and allies, so it's wonderful to be with you. We've come a long way advancing LGBTQ plus rights, which are human rights. Here in Massachusetts, all the way back in 1989, we were the second state in the nation to prohibit discrimination based on sexual orientation. I wish we were first, but we second, still pretty good. 2004, we were the first state in the nation to recognize same-sex marriage. In 2011, and then again in 2016, our state legislature passed laws to add gender identity to our anti-discrimination statutes. And in 2018, you all, the voters, resoundingly defeated by a margin of two to one, a hateful effort in our own state to overturn that law. Well done. Last year, I was proud to join Representative Lippe Garabedian and our colleagues in the legis state legislature to protect access to gender-affirming care for everyone who seeks it in the Commonwealth. And also last year, you might recall, we elected Maura Healy as our governor, the first openly lesbian governor in our state's history, one of the first in the entire nation, but certainly not the last. Unfortunately, as we have made this progress in Melrose, at our state level, and at in a, in a, in a, in a national level, we are now seeing a hateful, ugly backlash. We are all well aware there are right-wing politicians and their allies around the country that are seeking to attack and to discriminate against and to bully the LGBTQ plus community, especially the most vulnerable, our transgender youth. And one of the most hateful and repugnant of these people, the governor of Florida, is now basically using that as his platform to run for the White House. Well, we are not going to let him win. We are going to stand up. We are going to speak out against people like him and others who try to push this hateful agenda onto their own communities and our country. And we will stop them and we will continue to move forward. And we have work to do here in Melrose and in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts as well. For example, we need to pass the Healthy Youth Act 
You folks know what that is? That is an update to our sex ed curriculum to make sure that it is inclusive of sexual orientation and gender identity in our schools. We need, yes, and we're gonna get that done. We need to make sure that we're providing all of the supports and the mental health resources that our LGBTQ youth especially need, whether that's in our schools or in our communities. And we're gonna stand up and make sure that any efforts to ban books with LGBTQ plus characters, we are going to stop those efforts in their tracks. We will not tolerate them in our school libraries or our public libraries. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Prophetic words of MLK. So we're, this is a fight that we are all in together. As Randall said, it's an intersectional fight. Rep. Libba Garabedian and I and Mayor Broder and the other leaders in this community all stand with you and we will work together to advance a more inclusive and more welcoming and a more just society for all. Thank you very much, everybody. State Senator Jason Lewis, everyone. Um, just a little brief announcement. Um, like people come to a Pride celebration, sometimes it's their first foray and they're just like tiptoeing into it. I hope anyone doesn't talk to me, doesn't see to me that maybe I'm questioning my sexuality, maybe I'm questioning my gender. It's okay, you're welcome. If you have questions, the people at these tables around the side may have some answers. Uh, and with that, I'd like to welcome uh, James, James Giesler, the Executive Director of the North Shore Alliance of Gay, Lesbian, Bisexual, and Transgender Youth. Good evening. I am so pleased to be here tonight because I have a message I want to share with you. Events like these are crucial. They're absolutely important, maybe more so this year than any year ever. Your senator alluded to the fact there have been over 650 pieces of anti-LGBTQ bills um, presented in legislatures all across this country. We've had over 75 of them signed into law. There is an open and vicious attack against the LGBTQ community. And this is just compounding a bigger crisis in LGBTQ youth mental health that has shown a suicide rate that is heartbreaking. Last year in Massachusetts, 41% of LGBTQ youth who were surveyed reported having seriously considered suicide, and 11% attempted suicide. Those numbers are only gonna get worse with this kind of attack. But the good news is this. The surveys also have found that LGBTQ youth who live in a community that is known to be and shows itself to be supportive of the LGBTQ community have significantly lower rates of suicide than youth who do not live in those communities. So when I say events like this are important, are crucially important, events like these are actually saving lives. When you host an event like this and your mayors and your senators and your representatives come out and support the youth and they are showing that their community openly not only supports and acknowledges the LGBTQ youth but also affirms and loves them. That is the difference between life and death for some youth. So I want to let you know how important this is. And from all of us at Nagley, I want to say thank you for the work that you do in showing our youth that you support them and for saving lives every day. Be loud, be proud, say gay, happy pride. Thank you once again, James Giesler, the Executive Director of the North Shore Alliance of Gay, Lesbian, Bisexual, and Transgender Youth. Now, coming up to the stage, we have the Reverend Katie Omberg. I hope I pronounced that right. There we go, good, good. Who me? 
and now, Woo Katie! <laughs> the Reverend is an interim pastor at the Melrose Highlands Congressional Church. Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome to where I spend my Sundays. My name is Reverend Katie Omberg. I use they/them pronouns. And happy Pride. Who else queer here? What up? So you guys alluded to it a bit about how important it is to be in a welcoming space. My family's like, why do you live in the city with the second most expensive rents after New York? And I'm like, cute question. It's a scary time to be LGBTQ right now. There's laws that are trying to keep us from living in public. There's politicians who ask for our genocide. There's hatred all over. Just yesterday, I woke up, I live in JP. I woke up to news that a church blocks from my house had hateful graffiti on it, asking with a slur for the death of people like me. Even here, why do I pay this rent? It sucks. This fear and this hatred of those in power and those who hide behind keyboards or a can of spray paint, this is where I'm gonna, you know, you, you know what you're getting, you got the collar. This is not God. This is not the God who preaches love and acceptance and justice. As a person of faith, as a queer and a trans person of faith, I know my God is with me. Living through persecution and hatred, that's the oldest story in the book. Whatever holy text you might ascribe to or your parents might have foisted upon you, I'm sure you've heard stories of oppression and persecution. But in those stories, our heroes overcome the doubters and the slanderers, and their stories are our stories. Ours is the story of Moses, whose mother saved him by sending him somewhere he would be safe, and whose stepmom kept him safe so he could live out God's promises. Our story is that of Jacob, who demands the blessing of a new name given by God and leaves forever changed. Ours is the story of Jesus, a lot of people don't portray Jesus like this, but Jesus was scared. In one of the Gospels, he says over and over again to people, don't tell folks who I am. Because he knew what would happen if people found out about his real identity. Spoilers. In these stories, we know where God is. God is with the baby in the basket who must move to be safe. God is with the father who, even in that stage of life, wrestles with his identity. God is with the young man who invited a core group of trusted friends in to really know him, and really see him. I know it's possible I've lost many people here with all this God talk. Maybe it's too soon. Maybe you've been hurt by religion. I get it. I grew up Catholic too. <laughs> Maybe you've tried it and you're like, eh, it's just not for me. No worries. Maybe it's just not your vibe today. Totally cool. My hope, though, is that with these few words, a bit of the injury done by so-called Christians in the name of their God has been undone. Because Christian nationalists and Christian fascists, the people who proclaim to be protecting children, who are actually only looking to cause harm to children, especially queer and trans children, those people in those historical stories, they're with Pharaoh. They're with Pilate. They're with all those people who persecute and oppress because they can't bring themselves to cope with the fact that God's love surpasses understanding, that God's righteousness requires us to support the full humanity and the blessing that is the LGBTQ community. I'm telling y'all, allies in the room, you're lucky you get to know us. You're welcome. a celebration of LGBTQ people, of our flamboyance, of our exuberance, of our over-the-top extra selves. God loves flamboyance. God made rainbows. God, God made flamingos. Are you kidding? God made cheetahs and leopard prints. Like, come on, God, we know you got this. God made all of this, and God made you. God loves all of this, saw it with good. God looks at you, God sees you, and God says, you are good, 
and I love you. Thank you. Again, that was Reverend Katie Omberg, interim pastor at the Melrose College Congressional Church. We have one more speaker coming up, and that person is Thais DeMarco. She is the deputy director of the Massachusetts LGBTQ Chamber of Commerce. And as I'm saying this, I do not see said pro. Oh, she's right there. She was, she was hiding in a bright purple coat. Figures. That's what I do, I hide in rainbows. I also realized I'm gonna have to make a choice. I can either see you or I can see my notes. And I'm gonna, I love you, my Melrose homies, but I'm gonna choose the notes for today. I did get progressives earlier this morning, so this is not going to be a problem, problem for much longer. I did. That, that was one of my morning tasks. Two weeks. True progressive. Thank you all for being here tonight. I, I want to tell you a story. I grew up in Brazil, as a lot of you know, and Brazil at the time was a predominantly Catholic country. Hi, Katie. Uh, and, and folks were generally conservative when it comes to the LGBTQ plus community of which I am part. And I grew up hearing my grandfather, who raised me and adopted me, saying that if he had a child who was gay, he would kill them and then he would kill himself. I was about 85% sure he wouldn't do either of those things because I knew he loved me. But he was the last person I ever had a conversation with about being a lesbian. I came out when I was 13. I told everyone in my family had varying reactions. I won't bore you with. But I didn't talk to my grandfather about it until I was 18 and had a girlfriend whom he also loved and took to inviting over for meals even when I wasn't available. And, and one day we were all having lunch and he turned to us and he said, you know, I have been rethinking some things and I think everyone should just love whoever they love, and that is how I feel, pass the beans. <laughs> I spoke to him later that day and asked him what had changed, and he said, everything I knew about gay people is not true about you. I know you, and so I have to think that these things that I have thought were true for so long are probably not true about those other people either. I, I have many, many moments of going <laughs> and my wonderful partner, Elise Cherry, reminds me when I am having a, a less than gentle reaction that the world has changed because we have changed it. She knows, that, she knows a thing or two about that, having been chair of mass equality during the fight for marriage. Um, yep. The thing is that change is not without consequence, right? Things have changed a lot, and the other side reacts. We have wins, and they react because things have changed. But I'm calling them the other side. 
a friend of mine who shares my birthday forwarded our horoscope for today and uh, it said something along the lines of I am today you are vibrating at a higher frequency which is clearly true if you know me and I am keeping it very PG saying the other side instead of using other words Paul knows me well but that's really what happens right there's there's a reaction and we fight and we win and they fight back but here's the thing we're just gonna keep fighting things are not going to go back we are going to stand up we are going to stand up to every single bully we are going to stand up to everyone that tries to take from us the things that we have fought hard for. We're not going to sit down. We are not going to wait. We are just going to keep fighting and things are not going to go back. I look around this room and I look at the world and I see these wonderful GSA kids who are so, so, so inspiring. I see the way my own children react to things and I am in awe. They teach me lesson after lesson after lesson after lesson after lesson, Cora. Thank you. Um, Elliot too, but they're not here today. I see the fact that we have elected as Senator Lewis said, the first lesbian governor in the country who was followed right after by another, uh, but we got the first because we're Massachusetts and we're <laughs> extra special. <laughs> That's right. Um, I'm not minimizing the danger, and I want everyone to understand that I'm not minimizing the danger, and I'm not saying that things are not dire or serious. They are. What I am saying is that we have fought too hard. We have fought too hard and for too long, and we are going to continue to do that because it's what we do. It's what our community has always done. It's what we do. And so what I'm going to ask of all of you today, I don't know why Every time I speak anywhere, I give people jobs, so I'm not sure why you keep asking me to speak again, because you just know that I, I'm gonna tell you to do something. But what I'm gonna ask tonight is that folks who are here, who are allies, think about the concept of taking change into their own hands, and I want you to go out tonight, and I want you to think about one person in your life that you know holds views that are harmful and that put us in danger. And I want you to start a conversation with that person. Sometimes we as LGBTQ plus people can't do that. It's just too personal. When your own ability to be who you are is in question for somebody, it's really, really hard or it can be really, really hard to have those conversations. So please have those conversations for us. If that first conversation goes well, great, you're trained to have your next one. If that first conversation doesn't go well, try again with someone else. And keep doing it, and keep doing it, and keep doing it because the world has changed because we've changed it, and it will continue to change because we will continue to change it. Thank you, Melrose. Thank you, Thais DeMarco, once again. I argue with my phone. She is the Deputy Director of the Massachusetts LGBTQ Chamber of Commerce. For myself, I could have given my own five minutes of speech after each and every person. I just so, emotions are really raw right now for a lot of trans folks. A lot of trans folks, um, specifically um, 
gay and lesbian folks are likely also scared. I would ex I'd be surprised if you weren't. And this is where I fall inside my head because it's really emotional. Um, like for a transgender person now, if we are going to go on an airplane, we can't have a layover in Florida because we can't use the bathroom. An ex-partner of mine had to cancel being in her longtime friend's um, bridal party because the bachelorette party was in Florida and the wedding was in Texas. Didn't feel safe, can't go. And so we're scared and we're angry and what we're asking of you, it's like, it, if you're a straight cisgender person, I think it is really hard to understand someone who is trans, someone who's gay or lesbian, bisexual. Because I know how hard it was for myself, and I had those internal feelings to wrap all these ideas around. So for someone that doesn't have that, yeah, it's hard. You don't have to have the answers to defend us. Maybe you don't understand what it means to be trans, but you know what it means to be human. Please, defend our humanity. Thank you all so very much. I want to thank Randall Carter from the Melrose Human Rights Commission, and I am, ah, and I'm going to say her name even though she's not part of it anymore, but thanks also to Jen Champagne. That's, that's personally for me. Um, and with that, uh, give Girl Skull a few minutes and we'll blow your minds. Thank you all. <laughs>
passion through when you need a friend to carry you when you're broken on the ground you will be found so the sun comes streaming in so reach up and you'll rise again if you only look around you will be
Wait, can we have a break so I can breathe? Hi. Work or else golf. Did you get that? Did you catch that one? Scared everybody away. I know, everybody's gone. Maybe we can sing that other song. <laughs> Hi, yes. And no, I guess, because we don't want to get the turn out. So how many of you out there have seen us before? Yes! We love playing in Melrose. And not because half of us live here. We just love it. Are we actually playing in this Okay. We made our set list the other night, so I don't know what's going on. We need another minute. We need another minute, so we need to go yakety smackety. Alright, so some of you have seen us before. Have you seen us at Pride? Yeah, you can go uh huh or uh huh. Uh huh. Have you seen us at Melrose Porch Fest? Yes. Yes, maybe. She's like, maybe. Did you sing that song that my kids won't stop singing? Maybe. We did that. Did you all know that we're on Spotify now? Yeah. Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Yeah. It took us five years to figure that out. Only four. Only four. It took us four years to figure it out. Yes. Are you good? Yeah, yeah we're good. So we sing, uh, you know, songs about bodies and songs about metal. Is that tequila? I love you. I love you, Mayor Paul. I feel like we should have this in our rider. Everybody brings us cake and beverages. This is the this is the altar. The altar of giving is over here.
All right, so who's excited that we don't have COVID anymore? A lot. How many of us got COVID? Woo! How many of you got a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a new partner during COVID? <laughs> we have a song not about you. <laughs>
absolutely no tequila at all. I don't have any more jokes. Pam, you and I spar with jokes. You got any good ones? I don't have a joke, except that a certain joke got indicted on 37 counts. 37 felony accounts. Oh my gosh. That's a really good lead in. I hope they make him wear a monitor until the trial. So if he has to wear an orange jumpsuit, how will he know where his hair is? And where his... Well, he might have to wear an orange jumpsuit because he's going to get away from the orange tanning part. Oh yeah, his tanning. He'll go back to pasty like the rest of us. So that's a good lead into our next song. All right. Which is called Choices. for the cheap movie tickets yet, either. I know, it's not fair. <laughs> My body's falling apart, and I can't even get the cheap movie tickets. Oh, everyone go, oh. And I lost oh. my darn AARP card. You know they'll give you another one for free. <laughs> I'm sure they will. You can have mine. We're gonna put together a, a tour. 
coming soon. It's going to be called the Old as F Tour. I'm trying to watch. There's a few little ones left. Yeah, you know, you got to be old as F, and then we're going to play stuff. The next one is the first song I ever wrote that actually made it all the way to actually be performed. Um, and it's about my experiences waiting for my mammogram results in the group room. Mammogram. Who's got a good mammogram joke? Fresh out. Fresh out? There are no good mammogram jokes. Oh, bitch. That, okay, oh, that's... It's not actually a joke, but it's really good. Oh. Yep. Oh my god, do you know Samantha? Of course. He says he's a course. She says hi. He says hi. Church and right? What did you just talk to him? Well, we just want to say, we have a song to play. We have a word. Our audience is diminishing. By the moment. Just like, just like my brain cells. Just like my estrogen. <laughs> Paul's like, what? 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 The estrogen? You know, I got my estrogen patch and my melatonin patch mixed up, and I slept for three days. And I was really grumpy. <laughs>
I know this one. We know this one. Oh, the words. No We swear, it's a, the word starts with a D when we're singing it tonight. Some of, some of you might know this song. And if you do, sing along. But sing it the nice way. Sing it the nice way. There's, Mayor Paul has a cop back there, and if you sing the other way, they're gonna go get me some tequila. They'll be cranky. <laughs> Nobody wants them cranky. <laughs> oh, I, while we're, let, did you, did I introduce us? Now y'all know us. This is my friend Mel. Hi. <laughs> this is my friend Pam. And behind me, you all know my friend Samantha. She's done. She's had a day. And my name is Grace. Grace. Hi. When we write songs, we give them to her, them to her and she gracifies them. <laughs> and then we give them to Samantha and she does the magic. Thank you for having us. Um, yeah, nobody else is here. We love playing Melrose Pride. 50% 50, 50 of us are from here. The other 50% wish they were from here. <laughs> or not. Can we be honorary at this point? Yeah, know. yeah. We got, your, we got your roommate up. Okay. <laughs> Give us a t shirt later. And we look forward to playing many more prides. So thank you for having us. Happy Pride. Rock on. DTP. Thank you, Andrew.